We've talked about the necessity of the area of the throat remaining relaxed and allowed to change in order that it responds to the com commands from the motor area of the brain um, as a result of our tone imagination. Let's talk a little bit more specifically now about the area of the throat. The saxophone is control controlled in two places, the embouchure one and two, the area of the throat, which once again starts down here, goes all the way up and even includes the tongue because all 13 muscles of the tongue are connected to the throat. Just to demonstrate that, put your hand all over the area of the throat. Now make your tongue as tight as you can. Do you feel that, that, that when you make your tongue tight, the throat tightens? That's because all the muscles in the tongue, uh, 13 muscles are connected to the area of the throat. I want to talk a little bit about the throat and its role in controlling the, and playing the saxophone. Uh, Joe Allard taught me an, an exercise called matching overtones. First of all, what are overtones? On most musical instruments, not quite all, but most musical instruments, when you play any one note, you are hearing at least 15 other notes at the same time. These are called overtones or partials. They are in the same uh, relation, that is, uh, from the fundamental, above the lowest note, octave, fifth, fourth, major third, minor third, major second, major second, etc., on up ad infinitum, actually. They just keep going, and the overtones or partials get closer and closer the higher you play. So for example, when I play low B flat on the alto saxophone here, sounds like one note, but you're actually hearing at least 16 notes. I'm going to finger only low B flat and play some of these partials or overtones that are, are within this B flat. I'm not going to change my fingering at all. I'm going to do it all here with the area of the throat and a little bit with the embouchure. That's just a few of the overtones or partials, and they, they, the, the intervals stay in the same relation. I'll do it a half step higher now on low B natural. And it actually goes higher than that if you want to. These are called overtones or partials, and they make up the character of the sound. So when a, we were talking earlier about changing tone qualities, well, if you want to stress all of the high partials or high overtones, that's how you get a bright sound. I'll demonstrate it once more. So here's a middle F with all high overtones. That is, we're speaking about the overtones now, now within a given pitch instead of one partial or overtone at a time. If you want highs and if you want middles, highs, middles, and lows, that's more overtones present. If you want only the low partials or low overtones, so changes in tone quality are really just changes in the mixture of overtones on a given pitch. Now, what controls these overtones? What controls the saxophone? In part, the area of the throat. The area of the throat works in tandem with the embouchure. The saxophone is controlled with the embouchure and with the area of the throat 50-50, 30-70, 70-30, 60-40, 40-60, whatever you want as you play. The idea is to have as many tools at your disposal as possible, and then you can paint a picture in musical sound. That is very overtones. You can go from a very dark sound, like in a charcoal etching, 
to very black to a very bright sound, as in that charcoal etching where you're just looking at the white canvas and all the all the grays, the shades of gray in between, painting a picture in musical sound. Now, Joe Allard called this exercise matching overtones because the overtones or the partials are the richest and most in tune sounds on the saxophone. Thus, we learn to play each overtone, and as we play it, we learn how it feels what the sensation is in the area of the throat and how fast the air column is going. And, and then we match the overtone with the fingered pitch. Here's how it goes. You play low C, you finger low C, you're going to produce G on top of the staff. You can use the octave key or not. I don't use the octave key. So here's G on top of the staff, except I'm going to play low C. I'm going to finger low C. As I'm playing that partial or overtone, I'm asking myself, what does the area of the throat feel like? What is the sensation? Question, that's question one. Question two, how fast is the air column moving? Not how much air am I using, but what is the speed or velocity of the air? Now, the, the idea is, that that is the richest, most in-tune sound on the saxophone. I'm now going to finger the regular G with the octave key, and I'm going to use the same sensation in my throat and the same speed of the air, and try to match the quality of the overtone, matching overtones. So here's the overtone. Here's the fingered pitch and you go up a half a step. I'm now going to play low, I'm now going to play G sharp on top of the staff by fingering low C sharp. I'm now going to finger low D and, and match A with the octave key, the A on top of the staff. Now going to finger low B flat. You always go to the lowest possible fundamental because you want the maximum length of tubing involved. So instead of fingering low E flat for that B flat on top of the staff, which you could do, you go again back to low B flat, keeping the tubing or the instrument as long as possible. I'm now going to finger low B natural and get B natural one ledger line above the treble clef staff. I'm now going to finger low C and produce C natural two ledger lines above the staff. Now I'm going to finger low C sharp and match the high C-sharp two ledger lines above the treble clef staff. I'm now going to finger low B-flat and get D two ledger lines above the treble clef staff and match it. Low B natural I'm fingering next. I'm going to get D-sharp, two ledger lines above the treble clef staff. Now I'm going to finger low C and get three ledger line E above the treble clef staff. Now I'm going to finger low B-flat, always going to the lowest possible fundamental. Finger low B-flat again and get high F three ledger lines above the treble clef staff. Matching overtones. This is what I do every day when I warm up to practice. Matching overtones is the first exercise. 
I'm going to do the whole exercise now. It doesn't matter if you get the wrong overtone when you start, fine, don't worry about it. Wrong one. Next, this is what I do to warm up every day. I now play through my scales. You could play any pattern you want, any jazz etude, any chords, chord exercise, chordal exercise you want, any form of scales or modes to do this. Here's what I do. I'm going to play the harmonic minor scale. I won't play them all, but I'll give you an idea of how I incorporate matching overtones, because as I warm up, I'm getting used to what's going to go on in the area of the throat. So on and so forth. I do all 12 harmonic minor scales, stopping to check to see that the overtones are in the right place, that those notes between G with the octave key and high F are in the right place here, that they are true sounds with a true mixture of overtones that you learn to do by matching overtones. Then I do those same scales in thirds and stop again to match the overtones. <laughs> so on and so forth. I kind of lost my place there for a minute. So uh, I go through 12 scales and then 12 scales in thirds and stop and check to see that the overtones are in place. Then for me, you could, I take a slow Fairlane etude. I use the book called 48 Etudes by Fairlane with 12 additional etudes by Marcel Mule. It's published by Le Duc. That's the book I use. You could play any slow piece of music right now, any ballad, um, anything that's slow. I, I'm going to play one of the uh, etudes from the Fairling book that I use, and I'm going to stop and match overtones in the, as I play the etude. <laughs> particularly pretty, but now I'm ready to practice. Now I'm warmed up. Now I know what's going on in the area throat. 
and I have the feeling of how to match overtones. Now I'm ready to play whatever, practice something fast, etc. <laughs> I was going to play a little lead there, but that's enough. Now I'm ready to practice fast. Um, that's all about matching overtones, and that is how Joe Allard taught me to match overtones, and then how I've kind of evolved into using those overtones to practice. <laughs>